Just to remind you, Mr. Maisela, that you are still under oath. Okay. Okay. Yes, Mr. Monahed. Commissioner, the witness was on page 12 of paragraph 23 of the statement. Okay, I'll resume. The decision to enlist my cooperation with the members of the SAPS was made in line with clause 19.5 of the PIC fraud, corruption, and nepotism prevention policy, where it states under clause 19.5.1 that an employee can be protected under the Whistleblowers Act if they make a wider disclosure to the police. I'm going to move over to the next section where I specify the reasons for not disclosing to the CEO as well as to the board about the police investigation. The activities pertaining to the progress of the criminal investigation against the CEO were not disclosed to the CEO because doing so, I believed, would have obstructed the ends of justice as the CEO was and still is the subject of the investigation. We need to be mindful that the, the case is still pending, it's still going. There is an investigation against the CEO by the police as we speak. Given the nature of the corruption... So, sorry, are you suggesting that... I'm you, saying that, it's a you, statement. You're suggesting that you couldn't even tell him that, look, a case has been opened against you. Couldn't you even tell him that? That you, yes, no, I couldn't. That a case has been opened against you, and this is what is alleged. You couldn't even tell him that. I, I couldn't even tell him that. Why not? Because I believed that would be obstructing the ends of justice. It's like I'm informing a culprit that is being investigated by the police. That's how I felt and believed at that, at that point in time. All right. I'll leave it at that. So given the nature of the corruption allegations in the James Nogo emails, which alleged the level of board connivance in possible corruption, I also reasonably believed that going to the board might have the same negative effect on the effectiveness of the criminal investigation. The activities pertaining to the progress of the criminal investigation against the CEO were also not disclosed to the board because I had every reason to believe that the board was conflicted, if not supine, towards the CEO. As stated above, Members of the previous board were potentially implicated by the James Nogo allegations too, if not in corruption, then in very serious failures to exercise their fiduciary duties. The fact that the board would not be of refuge for me also seemed apparent from their generally incurious attitude to the substance of the James Nogo emails even after part of these emails were confirmed. For example, when the board was made aware by the executive head of internal audit that some of the allegations made by James Nogu were indeed true, no sanction was issued against the CEO. By this, I refer to the payment to Miss Pretty Law that the CEO arranged. The minutes which have attached as annexure air of the PIC board meeting held on Friday, September, uh, on the 29th of September 2017, outline in section seven that the executive head of internal audit confirmed the allegation that the PIC CEO effectively instructed a director of a PIC investi investi company, Mr. Mulauzi, to settle the debt of an associate of the CEO. Only a wolf, willfully blind board, I believe, would fail to see that quid procure to Mr. Mulauzi making this payment was in all likelihood further PIC favor. The board also failed to execute its fiduciary duties by not reporting the internal audit findings to the shareholders or to the authorities immediately after being made aware of the corrupt activities or credible suspicions thereof by the PIC CEO. According to the provisions of the PRICA Act, any person who holds a position of authority and who knows or ought reasonably to have known or suspected that any other person has committed an offense in terms of section 3 to 16 or 20 to 21 of the act or theft, fraud, extortion, forgery, or uttering of a forged document involving an amount of 100,000 or more must report such knowledge or suspicion or cause such knowledge or suspicion to be reported to any police official. So the board 
had knowledge of this transaction, which was in excess of 100,000, but they did not exercise their fiduciary duties to report the matter to the police officials. So it should be noted that these minutes were later doctored or sanitized to remove any information that may at a later stage have implicated the CEO. So the, the PIC incidentally submitted. Sorry, sorry, yes. I just wanted to check something. Um, during um, um, testimonies here, there were many board, uh, uh, people, you know, uh, people from the board saying that uh, the minutes were not doctored. Uh, to that effect? So I, I had all three versions of the minutes. So I had uh, all the evidence in front of me that the minutes were doctored. And those minutes were indeed provided to, to the police, all three versions of them. The original version, the doctored version, as well as the tracked version where all the information that was removed was tracked. Yeah, so, yeah, so, are you saying they were doctored to protect the, uh, the, C, the, the chief executive? That's correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Can, okay. Can, you, can you point to any part of the minutes? Yes, I do. to elaborate on your submission that they were doctored? I mean, as my colleague told you, there was evidence here that the minutes were, were not doctored. What had happened was what normally happens, that a draft set of minutes goes out to whoever was in the meeting and they will correct uh, or amend accordingly if they feel that, it, that there's an incorrect recording or, of what was said. Okay, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Commissioner, I'm happy to provide a, a document specifying, outlining what, which statements were removed or were doctored from the original version and my justification why I believe those statements were removed to protect the CEO. Were you present at that meeting of the 29th of September? I was not present, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Commissioner. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the PIC incidentally submitted the doctor. I would then ask, not that you present to us your, your view of it, I think you say you've got three, minute, three sets of minutes and they are tracked, and I think that it needs to be provided to the... I have already leader. provided them. Okay. Well, what's missing is a, a document rationalizing why I believe that they were doctored. Okay, yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, please send us that uh, justification. Thank you. Uh, the PIC incidentally submitted a doctored version of the minutes during my disciplinary hearing. When my legal representative advocate uh, Ngugai Tobi brought into the attention of the chair of the hearing, uh, the advocate Nazir Kasim, that, that PIC doctored minutes of the special board meeting held on the 29th September 2017, the PIC board responded by suspending the company secretary, Ms. Bongani Matewula, suspecting that she was the one who leaked the minutes to me. If I may intervene, Commissioner, it is clear from your statement that you came into possession of the minutes. Could you explain how you came into possession of the minutes? So the minutes were leaked to me by a source internal to PIC. I'm not privy to disclose the source in order to protect the source. As you know, that it has become common knowledge for PIC to victimize its employees when such incidents occur. So I will not disclose the, 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 the source on that basis and on the basis that there's a pending litigation with me against PIC as my matter is currently being referred to the Labour Court. Just to check, but you are saying it was not uh, Mrs. Matebula? I state under oath that mm -hmm. it was not Ms. Matebula who leaked the documents to me. Okay. And can we just be clear that it also wasn't you using your access as you had previously to get documentation that you actually accessed the minutes yourself? That is correct, uh, Ms. Makas, that I did not use my super admin access to obtain their doctored minutes. If I may ask, Chair, I mean, Commissioner, at which stage did, did you come into possession of the minutes? Was it before your suspension, after your suspension, or after your dismissal? I received the minutes, uh, the minutes during my suspension on the period when I was on suspension. 
it should be noted also that I continue to receive uh, documents or some documents will lead to me even after my dismissal. All three versions of the minutes were part of confidential documents shared with the SAPS after I've enlisted my cooperation with the police. Hello. Question, question. When you say other documents were leaked to you, um, what kind of documents besides the minutes? Uh, I'm not privy to mention what documents, but they were confidential in nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it could be about transactions, maybe? Partly. Partly? Yes. Okay. And uh, did you keep them or you passed them on, maybe? I, I never kept them or passed them on. You passed them on? Yes. All right. Sorry, who did you pass them on to? To the police. So the police would have confidential documents about pending deals? Yes, they would because they were uh, investigating the matter, yes. No, but they weren't investigating deals. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. Just to check, you pass them on to the police only or to other parties? I uh, pass them only to the police. Mm -hmm. uh, I did report the matter to the public protector as well. However, those documents were not shared with them at with that them. particular point, yes. Okay, so they only went to the police? Yes. Uh, the document, okay. Uh, the list of reasons why the board at the time could not be trusted goes on. The board of PIC could not be trusted because they were in violation of their own policy. Clause 7.15 of the PIC Fraud, Corruption and Nepotism Prevention Policy echoes the PRICA Act and places duty to report any corrupt transaction or suspicions thereof involving an amount of 100,000 or more to the police. However, the board of PIC failed to comply with this policy in respect of the amount of 300,000 payment made by Mr. Mulawuti at the direction of the PIC CEO to an associate of the CEO under the strongly implied and understood inducement of further PIC favor. Subsequent to the special board meeting sorry, held on the 29th sorry, of September sorry, 2017. Sorry. sorry, who paid this 300,000 rands? Was it PIC? It was paid by Mr. Mulawudze on the direction of, of, of PIC, of, of CEO. Why should the board be involved then? The board of the PIC, why should they be involved? Uh, the board were aware when they were presented with the report of the head of internal audit that uh, protocols, PIC protocols were not followed when this transaction was made. And as such, the board should have followed their fiduciary duties as per the PIC fraud, corruption, and nepotism prevention policy, and as per the PRICA Act, that they should report such irregularity to the authorities. No, we are not, we are, you see, we are not talking about something done by the PIC. This is, this, I, I, I hope you are not referring to the MST deal, but rather to the, to the 300 rand to assist a certain lady, which was done by Mr. Malawzi of another company. Am I correct? Yes, and Mr. Mulawiti owned an investing company which PIC also you know, provided investments to. Yes, but the amount of 300 rands did not come from the PIC, but rather from this other company. And my question is, what's that got to do with the board of the PIC? At, at that point in time, my understanding that PIC funds were used for this, on the, for this transaction. You mean the 300,000 rands was that PIC funds? My understanding at the time that those, those funds were paid uh, in favor of Dr. Machila, you know, executing his irregularity dealings with, 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 with someone who was purportedly reported to be her girlfriend. So as I've mentioned, I, I smelled that right there. In retrospect, are you still holding that view that the girlfriend, that this allegation is correct, that she was the girlfriend and that it was um, his money because uh, it it's clearly was not PIC money that so was used? So, after the Padlender uh, report, I no longer hold that view. How does that square with the question of having done all of this, taken documents to the police on the basis of allegations that were that have turned out to be incorrect. Does that not raise a question with you about your your response and how you've dealt with it? 
uh, remember, the, this was not one of the reasons why I suspected that the board had foul play. So there were a number of reasons that still stand even after the Badlander report. So my stand, uh, stand remains the same. Uh, subsequent to the special board meeting held on the 29th September 2017, another special board meeting was called for the 6th October 2017. During this meeting, the board was made, made a decision that any further investigation into the whistleblowing report be stopped. By then, the police investigation had started to touch on the substance of the James Nogo allegations and not only on the identity of the sender. This decision is captured on clause 6.3 of the minutes titled Minutes of the Special Board Meeting held on 6th October 2017, which I've attached to this annexure L. A board that passes a decision to stop such an investigation with proper scope, to me, cannot be trusted. So instead of the board requesting a full investigation on the allegations made by James Nogu, the board, through the resolution made at the Audit and Risk Committee on the 28th November 2017, opted to investigate the sender, thereby somehow violating the Whistleblowers Act and to lay spurious charges against both myself and Ms. Vogas Zimene. This can be construed as an attempt to deflect attention away from the allegations made by the whistleblower. So there was some suspicions of witch hunt here, which I'm, I'm going to touch on in my next section. So on the 18th September 2017, the CEO of PIC met with an IT service provider called Business Connection to investigate the source of James Nogu email. BCX subcontracted the services of SensePost and Naledi Advisory Services. So SensePost was responsible for conducting penetration tests and Naledi Advisory Services was responsible for conducting the forensic investigation. I might be missing something, but I just wanted to, to go back to Clause 9. Okay. Um, and if you're looking there, that the, the decision is captured in Clause 6.3 of the minutes titled Minutes of the Special Board Meeting held on the 6th of October, which you've put as an extra L. The 6th of October. I might have the wrong one here. Where's the 6th of October? Oh, the 29th of September, sorry. I think continue, I'll just find it here. Yeah? Okay. So ironically, there's no evidence suggesting that a formal procurement process was followed in sourcing the services of BCX, Naledi Advisory Services, as well as okay, Sense Post. Right. Yes. As such, engagement with these service providers could be in violation of the Public Finance Management Act, also known as PFMA. Sorry, can we just go back to the question that my colleague asked you? See, what appears to me to be Annex L is a copy of the minutes of the 29th of, of the September. 29th September. And okay. M is, well, our M is, so 6.3 is M This must have been an oversight on my side then. We'll, no, we'll let's rectify just, it. Let's just look it at this. It might be amongst them, but we, we're just checking. Uh, no, it is. It's actually an uh, extra M. M. Yeah. Okay, it's an oversight on my side. I'll no, correct that. No I'll correct that. Um. Okay. And you need to correct it to M. So it's, it's M for the record. M for my. Okay, thank you for the correction. Yes. It's fine, thanks. Okay, I, I, ironically, there is no evidence suggesting just to that. Come back, yes, just to come back, so Sense Post did what, and then uh, Naledi did what? Okay, Sense Post did uh, penetration testing. Yeah, what's that, sorry? Penetration testing. Penetration testing, okay. So, penetration testing is whereby you, you hire. Uh, people that pretend to be hackers mm -hmm. and they try to infiltrate your IT network mm -hmm. uh, pre uh, om almost simulating what a real life hacker would do. Yeah. Okay. And Naledi Advisory Services obviously were contracted for forensic, forensic. Uh, investigation. Okay. Yes. So ironically there's no evidence suggesting that formal, a formal procurement process is followed in sourcing the services of BCX, Naledi Advisory Services and Sense Post. As such, engagement with these service providers could be in violation of the PFMA. It should also be noted that uh, under the provisions of the Whistleblowers Act, whistleblowers are provided with an exclusion of liability from, amongst other things, disciplinary action in respect of acts prohibited by other law, oaths, contract, 
practice or agreement requiring him or her to maintain confidentiality or otherwise restricting the disclosure of the information with respect to a matter. It would be better for the legal team of PIC Commission for Inquiry to address this matter in a more theoretical detail than I am capable of. However, I do believe that the investigation and subsequent disciplinary action after it was known that I was cooperating in a police investigation against the CEO was nothing short of an effort to pierce the protections that the PDA Act provided me. Could you say that action was taken against you and then the sort of the other people? Or was it against you only? Uh, so here I'm only going to restrict this to me only. To you only? Yes. All right. But okay. did there could be other people? Yes, potentially. Okay. Notably, even after finding me guilty for breaching my duty of good faith towards the PIC by not informing the CEO that he was under a criminal investigation in which I was a source, Advocate Nazir Kasim admonished the CEO for directing the forensic investigation into me when he was obviously convicted. Uh, Advocate Nazir Kasim writes as follows. I will read. In so far as this matter is concerned, the CEO should have extricated himself completely from any investigation or any connection with those involved in any facets of this matter. Fundamentally, the CEO erred when he engaged the employee and his immediate superior to investigate the identity and or source of the Nogu email. That should have been a task outside the domain, interference, and control of the CEO. I should also note that during this forensic investigation into the identity of James Nogu, which was later extended to also identify persons within the PIC that are taking to, talking to the police, an email account with super admin privileges was created for Mr. Franz Likubo from Naledi Advisory Services on Mimecast on the 20th October 2017. Super admin administrator privileges allow for the viewing of the content of the emails and its attachments for all PIC users, even for the users that are outside the scope of the investigation. It should be placed on record that the forensic investigation was irregular for other reasons too. Uh, super admin privileges are like the keys to every lock in the PIC's email system. During my disciplinary hearing, I referred to this level of access as keys to the kingdom. The level of access afforded to, this level of access afforded to an outsider was overbroad, irresponsible, unnecessary for the investigation, and constituted a grave risk to the integrity of the PIC and its systems, whose effects down the line may never be known. This request to MIMCAS was made by the CEO on the 20th October 2017. I've attached that request as Annexia A, and it was specified within that letter that the investigation was for the period from the 1st July 2017 to the 20th October 2017. And the following PIC employees were listed as individuals to be spied on. First on the list was Ms. Vyogazi Menye, uh, Ms. Mr. Paul Magula, Ms. Bongani Matebula, Ms. Pamela Pala, Ms. Lufono Nemakovani and Mr. Ernest Nasani. I detected this suspicious email account belonging to Franz Likubo using my own super admin privileges that were authorized by Ms. Vyogazi Meng via a letter written to Mimecast on the 2nd of November 2017. I've attached that letter that is authorizing my access as Annexia X. This email account did not conform to the PIC standard naming convention, hence it was easy for me to detect it. Ms. Vyogazimene authorized my super admin privileges on the 2nd November 2017 so that I can retrieve all digital evidence of James Nogu emails. I retrieved all digital evidence of James Nogu emails and copied them to a compact disk. The compact disk was then collected by a member of the SAPS. At that particular point in time, it was Lieutenant Colonel Machiva. It was, it was collected from the PIC premises in Pretoria East. The police advised that this digital evidence of James Nogu emails was to be handed over to the Forensic Science Laboratory at the Cybercrime Unit in Pretoria East under the auspices of Captain Khan. To confirm receipt of digital evidence, the police issued me with a, a letter titled Exhibit for Examination dated 2nd November 2017, which I've attached as Annexia Y. Uh, can I ask you, evidence leader, if we could 
given that this is now from the 2nd of November 2017 to March 2019, what actually has become of that investigation, if we don't know at this point in time, that is a very long period for an investigation given all the documentation placed before them, so that the Commission can find out exactly where this stands. Thank you. So after I discovered the suspicious account belonging to Mr. Franz Liguo, the executive head of IT wrote another letter to MIMCAST on the 7th November 2017, requesting for this account to be paged. However, this request was, reject, or re, was rejected outrightly by the CEO. The CEO wrote a letter to MIMCAST on the 17th November 2017, requesting MIMCAST to withdraw all requests that were authorized by the executive head of IT. So it was a clear case of intervention there. So in addition to spying on the executives, the CEO instructed SensePost to plant a rogue wireless access point, what we normally refer to as the evil twin. That evil twin was planted to intercept traffic and to capture login credentials belonging to PIC employees. This was done without the knowledge of IT department and therefore the instruction was inappropriate. SensePost claimed that they captured my domain credentials. That they claimed that they captured my username and password. Uh, and then I, I later contested that claim with the engineer from SensePost who conducted the penetration test. I sent him an email on the 2nd November and queried this uh, thing and they admitted that to their untruthfulness and they later sent us a revised report uh, which was then issued on the 6th November 2017. So in view of this, I have every reason to believe that I may have been the target of that evil tree. According to the initial statement of work from BCX, which I've attached as Annexia O, this uh, statement of work is signed by the CEO of PIC on the second, 22nd of September 2017. Uh, this, there's an engagement with BCX and it affiliates it and, and, and its affiliates it, that it would cost a total amount of uh, 966,300 rands. Subsequent to this, PIC further engaged Nalidi Advisory Services through a letter of engagement dated 8 October 2017, which I've attached as an HRP, to conduct a forensic investigation into circumstances relating to the opening of a corruption case against CEO of PIC. The cost of this engagement was set at 256,000 rands. So PIC continued to engage Naledi Advisory Services at a combined hourly rate of 3,200 3, rands per hour to find additional allegations that they can use against me while the hearing was still pending. So in view of this, PIC spent way in excess of 1.5 million to charge myself and Ms. Vera Zimene instead of investigating the accuracy of the allegations by James Nogu made against the CEO. So I'm going to talk now about the disciplinary hearing to which I was unfortunately exposed to. So the crux of the defense during my hearing was that I took an undertaking to cooperate as, as a whistleblower and source to the police. This undertaking was made during the meeting with the police on Friday the 18th, October 2017, at the office of the provisional commissioner located at number 16 Empire Road, Parktown, Johannesburg. In his ruling, Advocate Nazir Kasim completely ignored this defense. Instead, Advocate Nazir Kasim reflected my defense as being that I was instructed by SAPS not to reveal to PIC that a case of corruption has been opened. I found this very bizarre in that it would be unreasonable for the SAPS to instruct me to inform the CEO of PIC that is currently under investigation. Even though I testified during the hearing that an undertaking to cooperate with the police was made on Friday the 18th, October 2017, Advocate Nazir Kasim kept on referring to the date of 2nd October 2017, which is the date when the case was opened, and not on the date when the undertaking was made, or when I took a decision to assist the police as described above. So there was no way that I could have deliberately withheld any information from my employer on the 2nd of October 2017 as what Advocate Nazir, Nazir Kasum alluded to in his ruling. 
This is because on the, 20, on the 2nd of October 2017, I had no knowledge that the police will opt to investigate, to investigate the allegations made against the CEO instead of investigating the sender. So that knowledge was only gained on the 13th October 2017. That is, on the 2nd October, there was no corruption case against the CEO per se. As such, there was nothing that I deliberately withheld on the 2nd October 2017. I only started to deliberately withhold information after my meeting with the SAPS, which took place on Friday the 18th October 2017. This is a pertinent fact that is absent in Advocate Nazir Kassim's ruling, which ultimately led to my dismissal. I submit that the decision to withhold information at, the late, at that later date was justified as my contractual duties were dwarfed by other superseding duties in the context I have tried to describe above. You know, you know Mr. Maisel, I've got a, some difficulty with your evidence in this regard. You, you are instructed by the CEO to go and investigate this James Nogo saga, am I correct? Yes. And when you went to the police, you were advised by some policemen that you should open a charge. Am yes. I correct? Did the policemen? It's on. Did the policemen tell you against whom must the charge be laid? On the second of October, the charge was not placed against anyone. Yes. On the 13th of October, the police did not specify that the charge of corruption be, will be laid against anyone. Yeah. They said they would look at the matter broadly. They will not focus on the sender. However, they will also look at the allegations made by the, the James Nogu or the whistleblower at the time. When did you and come those, to know? And those allegations implicated the CEO. I came to that knowledge on the 13th of October, 2017. On the 13th of October, you came to know of the fact that a charge has been opened against the CEO. That is correct. The, so I came to the, to the knowledge that the case will be looked into broadly and that the CEO might be the subject of investigation based on the allegations made on the email. And it is at that stage that you say you thought that if you were to tell the CEO what had happened, that now a charge has been opened against him, it you would... Uh, be committing a crime yourself? Uh, it's, not, it's not really a crime. I, I've, my initial reason was that I would impede or hinder the, the investigation. And secondly, I was bounded by contractual duties and the context within I enlisted my cooperation with the police. So the latter superseded my contractual obligations with the employer. But I chose to take a bigger perspective and look at the law of the land, which is PRICA, as well as the PIC, uh, fraud and corruption policy, which, is, which relies on PRICA as well as PDA, Protected Disclosure Act. I'm, I'm not trying to criticize you at all. I just want to find the facts as, and, and the sequence of events. I understand. You came to hear on the 13th of October 2017 that the charge is now against the CEO. That's correct. And you decided that you are not going to tell the CEO because you would then be hindering the investigation. That's correct. That, that's what I believed at the time, yes. 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 That's all I want to know. That's, yeah, thank you. Just a question. Um, you are saying the, the police are still uh, looking into the James Nogu uh, matter. That is correct. Uh, There's a new investigation yeah. officer that is assigned to the case. Yeah. Dr. Majila, as far as I know, was uh, the, the matter was closed. I mean, it was like investigated by the board and, and the board closed the matter and backed him up. Yes, but the police did not close the matter. The police mm. are still investigating. They've even assigned a new investigating officer mm. to look at this matter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So the case is indeed pending. Is it? That's correct. Um, sorry, can I, sorry to yeah, interrupt okay. I just want to follow up that point there. You say they assigned a new officer and the case is, are you still in touch with the police about this I am matter? St I am still in touch with the police on this matter. I do receive feedback as well now and then, written and as well as verbal uh, feedback from the police. And in what capacity would that be? As an informer to the police or as a PIC dismissed person or in what capacity does the, do the as police a complainant, continue? As a complainant because I'm the one who opened the case.
Commissioner, if I may ask a follow-up question. You said that when you made the statement on the 2nd of October 2017, your intention was not to open a corrupt, corruption case against Dr. Machila. Now you're saying that you opened the case, you, that you are, you are the complainant. Yes, remember on the records, you will still remain the complainant, whether the target was to pursue the two, Section 205 route or whether the target is now to lay, uh, investigate the CEO. On the police systems, I still remain the person who opened the case, irrespective of whether we're targeting the Section 205 route or whether we're targeting the CEO. Thank you. Now I'm going to touch on the confidential documents that were found in my position. During the course of my employment, I gained access to sensitive documents that confirmed some of the allegations made by James Nogu. These documents were shared with the SAPS investigating officer under the provisions of the Protected Disclosure Act, as well as my obligation to assist the police in the detection of serious crime. This explains why I was later charged with possession of sensitive documents. I was actually charged for cooperating and for acting within the obligations of the SAPS. I was still acting within my obligations, superseding mere contract law with SAPS. The can, information I, can I just ask you do, you, do you mention the nature of these documents later in your statement? Yes, yes, yeah, I do. Do you, do you mention them? I do, and, and I also provide reasons why Thank I you. access them. Fine, fine. So it's not necessary for me to ask you now. What you can ask me the, later. Yes. What, what was the nature of these documents that contained confidential matter? Yes, you can put that question on hold up until I went through those statements. All right. <laughs> okay. The information that I shared with the police led to the police issuing a subpoena to PIC and to the chairperson of the board requesting them to furnish the police with particular information that was relevant to their investigation. I would like to place on record that the full extent of all documents, confidential documents, will not be disclosed during this commission as doing so may jeopardize the pending police investigations against Dr. Dan Machila, as well as the pending litigation against PIC, as my disciplinary hearing outcome has been referred to the Labor Court. My matter was referred to the Labor Court on the basis that Labor Court has exclusive jurisdiction on matters related to Protected Disclosure Act. The CCMA does not have this jurisdiction. My dismissal is deemed as automatically unfair dismissal as contemplated in Section 187 of the Labor Relations Act. It, it is deemed as so because it is in violation of Section 3 of Protected Disclosure Act, which states that no employee may be subjected to any occupational detriment by his or her employer on account or partly on account of having made a protected disclosure. My testimony, therefore, will focus primarily on the confidential documents that were found by an LED advisory service during the witch hunt exercise. A question. Um, when did you become a whistleblower? Because I thought that James Nogu was the, the whistleblower. So I think it's a, it, it's a case of, of terminology here. Mm -hmm. So when I enlisted my cooperation with the police on Friday, the 13th of October, 2017, mm -hmm. technically I'm, I, I became a whistleblower to the police because I started sending them confidential documents and whistleblowing about uh, you know, things that were happening at PIC. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's a, it's a case of terminology here. Okay, from that day on you From that day, one. from the 13th onwards. It should be placed on record that, okay, I think I've touched on that. Oh, okay. It should be placed on record that all confidential documents found in my possession by an LED advisory services in an electronic format were accessed pursuant to Ms. Vuyoga's email having authorized me to have super admin privileges on our email archiving and security gateway, which is known as MIMCAST. Ms. Vuyoga's email authorized my super admin access privileges in a letter written to MIMCAST on the 16th October, on the 16th November 2017, I've attached that letter as an extra queue. In this letter, Ms. Vuyoga Zimene requested MIMCAST to grant me super admin access privileges on a permanent basis. 
the reason for permanent access was to simplify and expedite the process of elevating to super admin access on an ad hoc basis. I think there's a typo there. It should have been uh, ad, ad hoc instead of permanent. As stated above, similar access was authorized for me on the 2nd November 2017. So it was a case whereby Ms. Vyogazi would now and then write a letter to MIMCAST authorizing MIMCAST to give me super admin access. So the letter that Ms. Vyogazi wrote on the 16th, she wanted to you know, avoid all these ad hoc requests and you know, rather ask MIMCAST to give me a permanent super admin access. Okay, a confidential document titled LMA risk participation, I've attached it as, uh, I will attach it as annexure R. Uh, that concerns a transaction between Deutsche Bank and PIC on PRF of government employee pension fund was also found on my laptop. This document was shared with the SAPS as it was never intended for my own personal gain. I believe that I had reasonable justification for accessing and sharing this document with the police as it could assist the police with investigations into PIC transactions, particularly those approved exclusively by the CAO. My version that I access this file pays when to miss minutes having authorized me to access information still stands. As such, I believe that Advocate Kazim's finding that I did not have reasonable justification for accessing and retaining this document is wrong and based on considerations that are too narrow. I also accessed and shared with the, P the SAPS a letter of appointment of Naledi Advisory Services. This document relates to the opening of the corruption case against the CEO. This document was accessed pursuant to Mr. Menya having authorized me to access information. That is, I accessed this document during the period when I accessed all the other confidential documents. Since this document related to the opening of a corruption case against the CEO, it seemed relevant to the type of information to assist the SAPS with their investigation. Sorry, can I just ask a question in relation to this? Because it's not quite clear. Okay. When you say this, doc this document and previously you talk about um, Ms. Menya giving you access and, and therefore, in essence, authorizing you. Did she know what documents you were taking? No, she didn't know. So, so her authorization was for you to do your job and you use that authorization to take certain documents. That is police. correct. Yeah? Yes, that's correct. Is that a, that's so, correct. Yes, so it was authorized access. No, it was, it, it was authorized access yes. to do your job. Yes. Not authorized access to take documents out. There's a two different questions. That is 100% correct. Yeah. Yes. So you've interpreted the author, you've used the question of access granting authorization yes. to utilize that granting of authorization without Ms. Menya's knowledge, because the way this comes across, it, would, it could be interpreted that she knew what you were doing. And what I want to clear from you is, or understand from you, did she know what you were doing, or was she authorizing you in the context of doing your job that she understood you to be doing? She was authorizing me in the context of doing my job as she would understand me to be doing. However, I was not confined to those contractual laws. I had superseding responsibilities. By your over own it. decision. But I mean, what I'm just trying to claim here is not what you think you were, had the right to do. I just want to be okay. very clear yes, from this that Ms. Correct. Menya did not know what yes. you were doing in that authorization. That is 100% correct. Can, can I ask you, sir, um, you have mentioned in paragraph 8 that the documents or type of documents that, uh, that you, you got and passed on to the police, were those the only ones that you passed on or were there other documents that you retrieved? There were other documents that I retrieved. There were other documents that my lady advisor services couldn't find in my laptop. Yes, there were other sensitive documents that I shared with the police that I did not disclose in the statement. What was the nature of those documents? Uh, they were also confidential documents, uh, which I had reason to believe they were speaking to the allegations that were at, at, at the table at that point in time. And then you, you say in that paragraph, that I believe that I had reasonable justification for accessing and sharing this document with the police that it could assist the police with investigations into PIC transactions. Did you think that you, you needed to give documents relating to other transactions other than the one that James Norwood spoke about? He, so the, the, the fact that the police I uh, wanted to look at the matter broadly, yes, I believe so. 
And so you handed over to them documents that did not relate to what you were supposed to be investigating, and that's the James Nogu, the origin of the James Nogu email. But you also passed on other documents that related to other transactions that were confidential. Yes, which were exclusively approved by the CEO, which I believe at that time that uh, there was no segregation of duties in terms of approval of those transactions thereof. So I had reasonable suspicions at that particular point in time to say, hey, something is smelling here. Did you hand over all documents relating to transactions that the CEO passed? That had possession or that way within my means of reach. Can you give us an indication of how many transactions you handed over? Uh, as I've disclosed, uh, so there is a pending investigation with the police and I've been advised not to No, uh, but you, 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 you're telling us that you handed over documents. Yes. We're not asking you the content of the documents. You've indicated that there were documents okay, with I other can transactions only, uh, and I'd uh, like uh, to know if it's one or 500. Okay, I will only mention those that have become public knowledge. One of them is transaction involving IO technologies. No, we're not asking for the content of that. I'm asking okay. for the number of documents that you say the CEO approved himself. How many did you hand over? I'm not asking for the content of that. I'm asking how many, because that's unrelated to the transactions or the, 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 the email allegations. How many did you feel within your reach you handed over? You, will, you do know the number. Yeah, Please so advise us whether how many are documents. Uh, about two or three. Two or three? Yes. Three or two? Which one? Two. So you handed over two documents, yes. one of them which is then the IO transaction. One of them is the IO transaction and the other one was this one. Sorry, and the other one is? This one that is, I'm talking about here, the LMA risk. The one with the LMA risk. Yes. So those were the two documents that you sourced within your reach. Were those the only two documents? Yes. With the, uh, pertaining to transactions. Pertaining to transactions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, question? Yes. Do you know whether the PIC or, you know, is looking at the matter? Has uh, the doctor been called by the police? I mean, do you know any developments there on the side of the PIC and Dr. Majila? Uh, so the, 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 the CEO has not been called by the police yet. Uh, that's all I can say at this point. In the PIC legal department, is it uh, looking at the matter? Do you know? Uh, I don't have that knowledge. Okay. Right. Mr. Maeseva, I hope you understand that we are trying to establish the facts. Yes. Uh, it, it appears to me that uh, you, you might become uptight about the questions that we are asking, and we understand that too. But uh, we need to get the information. For instance, I want to ask you now, now that you are outside, I, you might have testified to this, now that you are outside of the PIC, did you say you st are still receiving information from within this PIC? So I can confirm that I, I did at some point had some documents that were leaked to me after I've been dismissed from PIC. The question is, do you still now? That's correct. You are still receiving documents from within the PIC at this stage? Yes. Yes, thank you. Follow up question? Um, in what form? Is it uh, printed documents? Is it fa uh, flash drives? In, in, in what form? Are, you know, are you getting the documents? Uh, mostly printed form. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mostly printed form. Yes. All right. These are confidential documents of documents that is of correct. confidential nature. Of the confidential nature, yes. Sorry, can I just ask in relation to them, again, if you can help us, the documents that are currently being leaked, do they relate to the type of investigation that the police are conducting, or do they relate to deal-making or investments? Uh, so they, 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 they relate to transactions now. They're no longer focusing on 
the transaction. So uh, you're getting transaction-related documents leaked from the PIC yes. that you're handing on continuously now to the police? Yes, that's yes, correct. So still, as you receive them, you're handing them on? Yes. Just another question also there. Do you know perhaps if such documents have found their, themselves to the media too, whether such documents have landed to the media? And no, none of them have landed to the media. However, there were some news around those documents, but they never specified the full content of the documents. And the police are accepting these documents from you? Happily. Just on that point, can you just tell us now who's in charge of the investigation from the police and which police station it's coming from? Uh, I haven't met the new investigating officers. I've been sent an email or an, 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 an SMS. What, just the name? Warrant officer, Warrant officer Minar, CG Minar. And which station? Because you went from Brooklyn to it's, Joburg. It's now sitting with the Office of the Provincial Commissioner. Office of the Provincial Commissioner. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, I don't know, where, I'm, where am I? Paragraph 10, I think. Okay. So, I also accessed and shared with the SAPS a spreadsheet document containing recent salary adjustment figures for all PIC employees. I've attached that spreadsheet as Annexia R. The motive for accessing this spreadsheet was informed by other allegations that were raised by James Nogu allegations of on victimization of PIC employees and unfair selection process for granting bonuses and salary adjustments to PIC employees. This spreadsheet confirmed the unfair criteria used to award salary increases. For instance, Mr. Brian Mavula, a general manager in finance, whose relationship with the chief financial officer, Ms. Matepo Mora, dates back since their days at Deloitte, was awarded a gross salary increase of almost one million, to be exact, Mr. Brian Mavuga received a salary adjustment of 957,975. This was done without any sound justification for such an obscene amount of adjustment. It should be noted that the anonymous whistleblower James Noga dealt with a number of allegations. Some of the allegations were not interrogated further by the board of PIC including the above mentioned allegation that dealt with employee victimization and unfair process of granting bonuses and salary adjustments. For instance, the allegations outlined on, on the James Nogu email dated 20th September 2017 were never interrogated. I've attached that email as an extra hour. Um, I'm gonna talk about my precautionary suspension. Sorry, just before you do, perhaps to the evidence team, I think we just need to correlate what the witness is raising as annexures and their numbers and what we've got. I think there's a little bit of a, a missing out. Maybe some of the annexures have not yet been included. Okay, if we can just clarify that for afterwards. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk about uh, circumstances leading to my precautionary suspension. So the executive head of IT and I were put on precautionary suspension on 20th November, 2017. We were called separately into the CEO boardroom. Present in the boardroom was the CEO and executive head of HR. Both the letters of suspension were already signed by the executive head of HR when they were handed over to us, and they were handed over to us by hand. The executive head of IT and I were not given an opportunity to read the contents of the letter. Even when we requested at least one day to go through the contents of the letter, 
and respond accordingly, we were denied that opportunity. At the time, the contents of the letter were very vague in that there were no clear allegations and, and, and there were no charges specified. As such, the contents of the letter of suspension were not consistent with the contents of the notice of hearing letter. If I may ask, were you given an opportunity to, to give reasons why you should not be su suspended? Uh, not at all. We were, we were not given a, an opportunity. We were just asked to, 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 to sign those papers. Uh, I remember I even had a, a verbal altercation with the CEO, you know, to say, well, what am I signing here? Because there are, no, there are no allegations here, you know. There are no charges leveled against me, you know. And his response was that this is my company, you know. Did you willingly sign the letter of suspension? Yes, I did. Okay, I'm now going to talk about circumstances related to my hearing proceeding. Uh, the hearing commenced on the 14th of December 2017 at the Maisel's Chambers, located number four Protea Place, Sentin. The chairman of the hearing was Advocate Nazir Kasim, Senior Counsel. During the first day of hearing on the 14th December 2017, the legal representative of PIC, Joe Mutibi, advised that there are additional charges leveled against me as their investigation was still go going, ongoing. So on the next day, which is on the 15th of December 2017, I was called into the PIC offices to attend an interview with the forensic investigators appointed by PIC, which is Naledi Advisory Services. I attended with my legal representative, uh, Mr. Eric Mabuza. Following the interview, which had all the hallmarks of a witch hunt, I was charged with unauthorized access to sensitive documents, documents intended for the CEO which were found on my computers. I was also charged with accessing pornographic website on the 3rd of September 2017, just one day after my commencement of my channel with PIC. Possession of sensitive documents uh, was in line with the undertaking that I took with the SAPS on, the 13th of, on Friday, 18th October 2017, in that I would provide any evidence implicating the CEO as, as I was a whistleblower now in that case. And then accessing of pornographic website was in line with my job description of senior manager IT security as per the job description that I've attached. And the job description specifies that one of my key performance errors was to continuously monitor and report on IT security risk, cyber attacks, IT controls, and effectiveness of these controls. So what happened after having received my new laptop, I checked if the laptop was properly configured and that all the IT controls, such as antivirus, web content filtering, were indeed effective. So by accessing pornographic website, I was checking if the same controls that block access to inappropriate website were effective when you work from outside the office. So when I discovered those controls were in effect ineffective, I immediately brought it to the attention of my security engineer, Mr. Clifford Mutiang. We then implemented the necessary controls to address the risk, and this assessment was done as part of the preparation of the information security strategy document, which was due on the 15th September 2017. This charge was later withdrawn. However, I know that this piece of scurrilous information nevertheless found itself into the testimony of the forensic investigator, Mr. Franz Likubo, before this very same commission. If I may intervene, was Mr. Likubu aware of this information before he came to testify before the commission? Mr. Likubu was one of the witnesses who were called in my disciplinary hearing, so he was aware of the charges that made, later made themselves into the disciplinary hearing. So this charge was withdrawn. So he, he knew before he came to this commission that this charge was withdrawn. But was it, was it not fact that at some stage you had pornographic material on your computer? I did not have f pornographic material in my computer. That's not a fact. The fact is that I access a website with pornographic content. That was, that was what I was checking. So when you, say I, when you say you have pornographic content in your computer, it means you went as far as download those pornographic content and store them in your machine, which is not the case.
I was later alleged to have forged my academic, qualification, my, my, my academic qualifications when applying for a job at PIC. This charge of falsifying academic qualifications was also withdrawn. So this was a clear case of, of witch hunt. Can we just specify what, what did they mean when they said you falsified? Which, which qualification did they allege that you falsified? Uh, they alleged that my master, master's degree in computer science, which I obtained at Rhodes University, was a false qualification. Did you provide them with the evidence that you had not falsified your qualification? No, I didn't. I just referred them to the institution to validate that with Rhodes University themselves. So this charge was later, this, this charge of falsifying academic qualifications was also withdrawn. So on the second day of, of the hearing, which was held on the 18th January 2018, the executive head of HR mentioned under oath that the internal audit investigation cleared the CEO from the allegations made by James Nogu and that the board took a decision to absolve the CEO from all allegations. The next hearing was supposed to be held on the 25th, uh, Thursday, 25th, January 2018. However, PIC decided to postpone the hearing, citing unavailability of the chairperson as the reason for the postponement. Another reason why PIC decided to postpone the hearing is because they were very reluctant in sharing the internal audit report as evidence of the hearing. Subsequent dates for the hearing were scheduled for the 11th, 16th, and 17th, April 2018. The last hearing was held on Friday, 25 May 2018, and I was officially dismissed on the 1st June 2018. Following my dismissal, I have not been able to find employment, as this matter has severely ruined my reputation in the industry, despite my credentials and accolades. While it may be ironic to others, it's painful to me to note that the people who directed my suspension, investigation, and prosecution in a disciplinary hearing have all left the PIC in some disgrace after the allegations of James Nogu. In so far as what James Nogu alleged in his email have largely panned out to be true. This is evident from the fact that the CEO is no longer at the helm of the PIC and the majority of the conflicted executives are gone and the remainder of the board members so lost the confidence of the minister that they too were asked to resign. All who are left is the acting CEO, which is Matepo More, the executive head of HR, Christopher Polwane, and the, the law firm that has been appointed by uh, PIC, which is ENS Africa, instructed by no who knows whom in the PIC to continue my legal persecution in the labor courts. My next section touches on the inconsistencies relating to the settlement that was given to my superior, Ms. Vyogazimeni. So the PIC pay, paid the executive head of IT a settlement of approximately 7.25 million which is uh, equivalent to her 29 months uh, salary, despite her being with PIC for a period of 18 months. This amount, I believe, is irregular and is tantamount to bribery. Uh, this settlement triggers the following inconsistencies with the PIC disciplinary process. The first inconsist inconsistency is that the main allegations on the charge sheet of both myself and Ms. Vyogazi were the same. However, PIC decides to settle only with Ms. Vuyagazi and to dismiss me on the same allegations. Uh, the second inconsistency is that the letter of reference that was issued to Ms. Menya by PIC, subsequent to her acceptance of the settlement, states that no misconduct was found on Ms. Vuyagazi Menya's part. Yet, myself, who was the subordinate of Ms. Vuyagazi, who was charged with the same main allegation as Vyogazi was found guilty of misconduct, which doesn't make sense. If I may intervene, Mr. Polwane, the executive head of Human Resources, testified before this commission that the settlement relating to Ms. Menya was a negotiated settlement. Was any offer provided to you, any settlement offer? Uh, not at all. In actual fact, I will use uh, Advocate Joe Matibi's words on the first date of the hearing uh, when they offered us the settlements. So I was offered a settlement of two months. Uh, they say that they based that <coughs> on the fact that I had only been PIC for two months 
and I was still on probation when I was suspended. However, he mentioned in his own way, he said, Mr. Maisela, the, the attitude of PIC is different when it comes to you. Those were his words. However, when it came to Ms. Fiorazi, they did, there was a number of negotiations uh, which ended up on a settlement of 7.25 million and me, a mere dismissal. Did Mr. Motibi explain to you why it was said that when it came to you, the attitude was different? So the attitude was so hostile in such a way that they were not even open for negotiations for reasons that are unknown until today. I would like to read my conclusion. So I have prepared this statement in accordance with the request of the legal team of the PIC Commission of Inquiry. It may not reflect the full extent of employee victimization that exists at the PIC, but it does certainly highlight the ill-treatment and unsatisfaction that I have to endure during my <laughs> Mr. Commissioner, can I just ask for an adjournment? <laughs> Will you adjourn for a few minutes until you call? <laughs> Switch his mic off then. Switch his mic off.
Thank you, Commissioner. Are you, are you fine now, Mr. Muslim? Yes, I'm okay. Thank you. I just want to assure you that us asking you questions is not to attack you in any way, but rather, as I said earlier, to establish the facts that we need to establish as a commission. Right? I fully understand. Yes. You okay, may proceed. I'd like, I'd like to read my conclusion. So I have prepared this statement in accordance with the request of the legal team of the PIC Commission of Inquiry. It may not reflect the full extent of employee victimization that exists at the PIC, but it does certainly highlight the ill treatment and unfair dismissal that I had to endure during my short-lived tenure at the PIC. The entire termination process that spans from my precautionary suspension within a mere two months, leading to my dismissal, encompassed the hallmarks of a witch hunt exercise with a clear concerted effort to deflect attention away from the main allegations leveled against the CEO to finding people that can be used as scapegoats. Unfortunately, I was that scapegoat. I cannot stress enough how unique the circumstances were in which I found myself. Within weeks of joining the PIC, I stumbled into a cover-up directed by my CEO, overseen by a weak and perhaps complicit board to discredit serious allegations of wrongdoing against him. In my dealings with the police at this instruction, I came to understand what was happening and was forced to choose between the easy course and the hard one. The easy road was to play my role in the hunt for James Nogu, ignore my misgivings and conscience, and thus become part of the fabric of state capture and corruption rife in my country, South Africa, at the time. The hard route was to risk dismissal and worse to further an official police investigation into credible allegations of wrongdoing at my new employer. I made a choice, trusting that invoking the Protected Disclosure Act would assist me if need be. The choice had terrible consequences for me personally, my family, and for my career. This is primarily because the chairperson of my hearing, Advocate Nazir Kasim, found that he had no jurisdiction to consider a whistleblower defense and confined himself to narrow contract law considerations. I am nevertheless, I am nevertheless content with the choice I made of being a good citizen and I do not regret it in any way. I state categoric categorically that I have not committed any misconduct at the PIC. My initial engagement with the police were as per the mandate of the CEO my further engagements with the police were in line with the PIC fraud, nepotism, and corruption policy. They were in line with the Protected Disclosure Act, and they were also in line with the PRICA Act. In my view, I would like the PIC Commission of Inquiry to recommend the reinstatement into my previous position, that of Senior Manager Information Security Risk and Governance. I reserve the right to supplement this statement at a later stage. I do thank you. Mr. Maisela, evidence was placed before this commission that a letter was written to the board of the PIC on behalf of concerned employees of the PIC after your dismissal. Were you the author of the letter? No. I state under oath that I was never the author of that letter. Do you perhaps know who could have been the author of the letter? I have no idea who wrote that letter. Okay. Uh, Mr. Likubu testified before this commission that it was easy to identify who James Nogu is or was. What is your, do you have any comment on that? Uh, my comment is if it was easy to identify who James Nogu was or who James Nogu is, why don't they have that knowledge? And he testified before this commission that you intercepted Dr. Machila's emails. What is, do you have any comment? Uh, I think that is a spurious allegation that is worth to be proved. So he must give us evidence that of that interception. Uh, he also testified that you accessed a document I think that was sent to Dr. Machila on the 13th of October. Yet your evidence before this commission is that you only had super admin access on the 2nd of November. 
And on the 16th, when it was made permanent, do you have any comment on his allegation that you accessed the document on the 13th of October before you had a super admin, super admin access? So yes, that, that was also used uh, during my, my disciplinary hearing. So upon further investigation, we determined that the document was accessed after our pays went to uh, Mr. Vuega Zimene granting me, authorizing me access. So that document is the LMA risk document that I did mention here on the, on, on, in my statement. So uh, I will not give further forensic evidence that justifies how or when the document was accessed, but I can state under oath now that it was during the period when I had authorized access. You, you also testified that Mr. Likubu had super admin access. Was it usual for someone who is not an employee of the PIC to be granted super admin access? It is so unusual, it's unheard of. I did uh, mention this in my statement, you know, that you know, it, it opens or it, uh, it jeopardizes the integrity of that forensic investigation itself, you know, because the risks thereof will not be known of, uh, in three years down the line. Uh, but if he was, if he had been authorized or instructed to try and trace James Nogu, would you say he in any event should not have been given super Yes, access? it was over, but it was unnecessary to give them that level of access. That level of access I referred to as keys to the kingdom, it was more than what he, he more than what he required to do his job. Those will be my questions, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you very much. Uh, you've just, um, I want to just understand a little bit about your thinking, if you can explain it, because you've just indicated that giving Lekuba the keys to the kingdom was a risk. Yes. But you demonstrated the extent of the risk by what you've done. That is correct. Uh, my role as a chief information security officer warrants me to have that level of access. It warranted the level of access, but it did not necessarily... Or the question I would ask you is, having had the keys to the kingdom in, in that, how did you use those keys? Because used you used them in a different manner from what the authorization was given to you by Mrs. Menye. I fully agree with you. I used it in a different manner that was authorized by uh, Ms. Menya, but I did not use it to benefit me in my own personal capacity, and also did not use that access for uh, what I would refer to as clandestine uh, uh, or wrong uh, operations. I did that during my contractual obligations with the police, so I did that to, as a good citizen to legitimately to share information, to assist the police in the fight against corruption. On paragraph 26 of the disciplinary hearing, it states, and I really just want your, your sense of, of how you feel about this paragraph. Obviously, there are lots of paragraphs, but I'm just singling out this one. Uh, the finding is that the employee deliberately tried to conceal from his employer the fact that the police were investigating from his first visit to the police a charge of corruption against the CEO. His agenda in so doing is not something that I need to speculate upon because in cross-examination the employee is quite emphatic of his state of mind, on his state of mind, when he intimated in response to him having taken possession of PIC documents, his justification therefore was that he was targeting the CEO. And he says earlier that Employment, the, he wants to demonstrate the basic proposition that Mr. Maisella had a duty forthwith to report back to his employer that the police were of the view that a corruption charge featuring the CEO be opened. That this would be the subject matter of further investigation. This he owed in the least to the board of the PIC and in my view, common courtesy would have necessitated him revealing this, revealing this fact to the CEO. Um, you were obviously in that disciplinary hearing and clearly it has impacted on you with your dismissal very severely. 
Just using those two examples of the finding, how do you feel about that? Okay, first, I'd like to comment on the fact that uh, I said targeting the CEO, which may come across as if I've got a personal vendetta against the CEO and hence I'm targeting the CEO. No, that was not the case. The case was focusing on the CEO was the right way that I was meant to use. And also, I did mention in my statement that yes, even though I had a duty of faith to disclose to my employer about those allegations, I decided not to because I did not want to confine myself to mere contractual laws. Instead, I chose the laws of the land to supersede the mere contractual laws, and then I cooperated with the police to assist them. As such, I did not have any obligation to report to back to my employer that the, the employer is being investigated by the police, and I still stand on those reasoning. One or two, one or two questions from my side. Um, yeah, just to make sure that you know, uh, to 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 add to the judge here that you know we are trying to be fair here. We're just asking you questions just to find out uh, the truth. Yeah, all right. So I'm gonna ask you to to assist the commission on one or two things. You know, if you can, since you are here. Um, the first question I would like to ask you is in terms of the leaks and the IT, uh, the tech uh, story at the PIC. Is that, I mean, why do you think there are so many leaks and uh, what can be done, you know, to, to stop them? And this is within our terms of reference. I think there's, there's reasonable suspicions within or amongst PIC employees that uh, there might be transactions which are not above which are not above board mm -hmm. and hence employees feel that uh, you know duty to report those uh, should I say suspicious transactions you know and they, they need to come out however mm -hmm. my belief is that the platform within or the environment within PIC is not conducive enough for those people to whistle blow such transactions mm -hmm. so they find any available avenue mm -hmm. to leak that kind of information. Mm -hmm. And there's s some suspicions that I am James Nogu as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that suspension has led to the fact or has driven some certain members within PIC to leak those information to me also, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that is my comment. And is there some way in which the systems can be strengthened? Or stopped, you know, the, the leaks stopped? So in, in, in the realm of IT, IT is composed of people, processes, and technology. Mm -hmm. When you strengthen the systems, you're only addressing the technology component. Mm -hmm. You cannot address the people. There's nothing stopping people from walking away with confidential documents, no matter how robust your technology may be. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing stopping people from stealing with their eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is my response. All right, okay. Next question. Would you, I mean, as a person who's uh, well clued up in security and all that, can you venture some ideas about who is James Nogo? Who on earth is James Nogo? Is it multiple people, internal people, external people? I would like to reserve my comment there. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Um, my final question is, I think you tried to address it a bit. You were at the PIC for two months, and this has morphed into weeks and months and months of uh, pain for you, pain for other people, you know, you can't get a job and all that. What caused that? I mean, for, you were there for two months, and this thing has just snowballed into a very, very difficult situation for you and others and all that. What has caused that? This has been troubling me for months, you know. You have been there for two months, and what, what has caused these issues? Uh, I, I wouldn't know, but the best answer I can give you is that, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in God. When God appointed me at PIC, he knew that I would walk into such a storm, you know. And if it wasn't for the people 
the likes of myself and Vuyogazi, all these things that are happening at PIC wouldn't be at the level where they are now, where we even sit on this commission to discuss such things. So I believe as a good citizen, I've contributed to, uh, positively to the fight against corruption in this country. And I'm glad that despite the consequences that I endured, that has effectively negatively impacted my career as uh, my life personally, as well as that of my family. That's all I can say. Mr. Mr. Commissioner, may I, with your leave, ask a question to this witness, which I hope will assist the Commission in coming to a conclusion. Yeah, even in the SCA Senior Council, when he wants to ask more questions, is allowed to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Mr. Maisela, what bothers me is the following. There's this Norgu email accusing the CEO having a girlfriend pretty low. Two, giving her a loan of 21 million for MST. Three, assisting her with 300,000 rand. The board of the PIC considered that and found with regard to the girlfriend, there's no substance. With regard to the 21 million, there's no substance. Dr. Machilla agreed and conceded that he was instrumental of the 300,000 payment to Pretty Low. All that went to a forensic investigation by eminent senior counsel, Butlinder SC, who found A, there is no girlfriend, B, there was no loan of 21 million granted by Dr. Machilla and found that Dr. Machilla was instrumental in assisting Pretty Low with 300,000 rand, which is not a criminal offence. So what is, what is left of the, the fundamental complaint of this so-called whistleblower, Noku? Okay, so I'll start first by correcting you. So those allegations that were made by James Nogu were not only confined on the email that was received on the 18th, as well as the email that was received on the 5th of, of, of September 2017. So there were other allegations that were made by James Nogu, especially on the one email that was sent on the 20th of September, which also brought about new allegations around victimization of employees and all other sorts of allegations. So secondly, I cannot rely my confidence on any investigation that involved the board of PIC because the board in itself was complicated. They turned a blind eye on certain allegations which were worth further investigation. They were quick to absolve the CEO of, of all those allegations irrespective of a sound scope of investigation within the police. I will only place my reliance on any investigation that is done by people who are equipped and employed and whom the investigations of criminal conduct such as these ones is their vocation. And those are the people like SAPS with whom I'm now interacting or cooperating with. That is my response. Okay, can I just follow up on uh, what my colleague Aladikha asked you earlier <clears throat> about who James Nogu is? And then your response was that you'd want to reserve your comment. Okay, I'm not James Nogu. We, we suspect that you're not. Yes, the fact but of the matter or the truth of the matter is that I am not James Snow. Yes, the, but the question was who is he or she? Do you have any idea? No, I don't. So, so that's the comment that you didn't want, that you reserved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
anything else? Yes, Mr. Maisel. And is there no way you, you want to uh, sort of help the commission on speculating who James Nogu is? Any other way, given our qualifications and skills? Uh, because we need assistance on this thing. If there is a way you can uh, assist, please do. Uh, remember, you know, I, I'll be reluctant to assist even though I do have the capabilities of doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being that James Nogu is a potential whistleblower here, and whistleblowers should be protected. So I'll give you the example that was given to the police when I met with them. They gave an example of a house that manufactures drugs, whereby they receive a call from an anonymous caller telling them about a house that manufactures drugs. So ideally the police will just rush to the house that manufactures drugs. They will not investigate the caller. So what you're doing now, you're asking me to investigate the caller, which is when you find the caller, what are you going to do with the caller? No, you should be investigating the allegations that are made by the caller, not the caller himself. No, but certainly if the, if, if the caller is able to help and confirm that this is correct, then that would, that would help a lot. In any event, what I want to suggest to you is that uh, think about it and uh, if in the end you feel that you should reveal something or disclose, the evidence leaders are here. You can do that to them, not necessarily in public where we are at the moment. All right, think okay. about it. All right, thank you. Just to add is that we have asked uh, James Nogu to come forward to the commission if they have some info, which will be treated uh, confidentially. So okay. you, you said there was a worry about the whistle blowing, but James Nogu can come and give the, the evidence leader the, the information and it can be protected within the commission. Okay, thank yes. you. What, what is left now, Mr. Maisel, is to thank you for availing yourself and coming to testify before us. Thank we you. We are very, very thankful for that. And uh, I just hope that uh, it will interest other people who would then take a decision to come and testify before us as well. Okay. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Mr. Commissioner, that concludes the business of the day. Oh, I thought we were just going for tea and come back. Mr. Commissioner, I think I need to explain. This whole day was planned to go till half past four, but what happened in the meantime caused me to lose another half an hour, which I, which I think I made up, which I lost yesterday, but tomorrow will be running smoothly from 10 o'clock. So, from my side, my apology. Just to then be clear for tomorrow, it's from 10 to 12. Tomorrow is 10 to 12. Yes, thank you. That means we'll adjourn then until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning.